Hello and welcome to Panthea of the Geeks. This is the first video for the new uh, Space Marine Codex, Codex Adeptus and Starters Space Marines. There it is, with the striking Ultramarine on the front. Boo. 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 And some data cards as well. Yay. Yay. So I'm going to get them to Claire to open up and have a okay. look at them first. It's a nice big book. Nice big book. It's bigger mm. than the last book. Bigger than the last book. It's bigger on the inside. Like TARDIS. So there what we go. got card wise? Got yeah. Devastator Doctrines. These are the new Doctrines that um, Space Marines can use, I believe, when they use certain formations. So hopefully you can see that on there. That's a combat doctrine. Feel free to pause the uh, video as usual to take a look at these. Tactical Doctrine. Trying to get a little light on that. There we go. And then we have the chapter tactics, specifically Salamanders! Yay! Flamecraft and Master Artisans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a feel no pain, a 4 plus save against flame weapons. And there you go. And when using flame weapons, salamander models can re-roll fail to wound rolls. Armor penetration rolls that do not result in guns and penetrating hits. Mm. And master eyes on so it's free upgrades. Yay! Cool. Thought Marines. Shall I let everyone read that? There you go. White scars. Jobs tactics, born in the saddle. Fight on the move. Fight on the move. Raven Guard. Another go. one of your favourites. Another one of my favourites. Slightly more underwhelmed by this chapter tattoo. Yeah, strife from the shadow and winged deliverance. The winged deliverance not too bad. Hmm. I like that one. Pure of Fists. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Or belter drill, re rolling the ones. That's standard stuff. Iron hands. The flesh is weak. Six plus saves. For, uh, feel no pain. Machine empathy. It will not die. That's <laughs> pretty good. Okay, and the Black Templars. There you go. And so those are the cards. So they're handy to the other have. Cards in there as and well. then there's the objective cards, which are handier to have. Yeah. I suppose these are quite useful. I mean, obviously, you only have probably have one chapter, so the rest aren't going to get used at all. Unless you've got multiple chapters mm. all together. But there you go. So the book itself, that's bigger than the last one. So let's get in there. So we start as usual with uh, some pictures, and then we have the Empress Sword. There it is, and the background begins. Oh, I had a quick flick through, and a lot of the backgrounds just what we've read before and pictures that we've seen before. There's a few nice new ones in there, which look really cool, and a few little bits. There. I mean, we've we can't, that's a different version of what I've read before how the space marines are built, but I've, I've seen that before. It's like he's got a stomach bug. But um, maybe he has. Oh, is that the imperial toilet? <laughs> oh, he's clenching there. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> well spotted, Claire. Um, <laughs> and then we have the Codex Astartes and the Finding Chapters, which we have in every version of the book. So, there you go. I didn't notice anything new we haven't seen before. What do you mean, World Eaters excommunicate traitorous? Because they're traitors. They're not. They are. No full well, they are. Book's wrong. 
it's not wrong. And then chapter organisation with the company colours. Cool. Galactic map of the chapters. There's Nocturne. Yay. And Deliverance. Yay. And Baal. Yay. <laughs> Boring. Why? The Rock. Mm. And uh Oh, Wind World comes in first. Yay! <laughs> Crimson Fists. Oh, Crimson Nothing, you love them. I don't. So, some background on the Ultramarines, and then we have Ultramar itself. And there's the Death Watch training world. Talish Supreme. There we go. That's pretty cool. So, basically, they're training right next to the Ultramarines. I wonder if the Ultramarines are just spying on the other chapters that way. Mm. Watching them from afar. Yeah. You can zoom in a little bit as well. So, white, white scars, imperial fists, Ooh. crimson fists, crimson fists, and black templars. I like the pictures. Yeah, I've seen them before though. I mean, these aren't new pictures. They're very cool. I've yeah. always liked. Were they the not the pictures Anders. of the old um, limited they, edition ones? I think they may well be in the covers. Um, we didn't get the limited edition, so if that's not that citation needed on that, basically. Um, Salamandars, Raven Guard, Iron Hands, and then some inter interesting stuff on Battle Companies. But again, this is stuff we've seen before, really, in every Space Marine Codex. It's a cool picture, I like this one, the Necrons, That's and then the cool. Salamander Scout. <laughs> That's a cool little picture. Uh, tenth Company, Chapter Command Structure. Plenty of fluff to get your teeth into if you've not got a Space Marine Codex before, mm. which is unlikely, but you know, there's plenty to get your teeth into. And there's probably a few, I mean, I've had a very quick look through it so far, so there's probably bits I've missed. So this is a first look, and then we have the uh, timeline. Obligatory timeline Obligatory that you timeline. seem to. The Horus Heresy. Oh, really? Everything interesting. <laughs> yeah. Everything else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, oh. No, that's not true. It is. <laughs> it's not true. I just find the Horus Heresy interesting. I find 40k interesting. They're both cool. And then the end of all things, this sort of way. AKA the end times. 40k the end time. <laughs> so we have some information on chaplains, captains, tactical squads, tidbits of information left, right, and centre. I need to read them. Um, devastators, veterans, dreadnoughts, techs, battle tanks. Cool picture of the Land Raider. I've seen that before as well, though. That's the, funky. The cut out picture. I'm sure that was a poster once. Probably. But there it is. That's well, a very pretty cool. cool picture of the Land Raider with the cut out. And Legion of the Damned and Librarians. So yep, Legion of Damned is definitely in this codex. Did you hear rumours they weren't, but they are definitely still in here. Then we have the colours, which they've been doing in the recent sort of... I like that style, to be quite honest. You like that? I do, yeah. 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 I like the fact they're showing us all the badges and stuff. Yeah. And the colour schemes and banners. It does look... It's pretty well set out. So there's some more Ultra Boys. <laughs> And some more. More ultra boys. And more. And then we have some second successor chapters of the Ultramarines. Uh -huh. So we have Iron Snake, Silver Skulls, uh, Genesis Chapter, Aurora. So there's quite a few to pick from. I think it's just the blue I don't like on the Ultramarines. I think it's just a bit boring. Yeah, and I think the chapter as well, they're very, I don't know, a bit goody two-shoes. I don't think so. Mm, maybe it's just I, th I think they portray themselves a goody two-shoes. Yeah, I think that's why I don't like them. I think Gilliman trying to set up his new empire in the Horus Heresy. Mm. That was a bit scary, actually. Then we have the White Scars. Khan's boys. Mm -hmm. Love these cool little patterns we got there. They're really cool, actually, Showing yeah. You. Gives you some ideas of how to paint the legs and stuff if you don't already have. If you want, if you just start from scratch. 
Then we have a pair of fists. Mm -hmm. Dawn's lot. Your lot, Salamanders. <laughs> and a Raven Guard, mm -hmm. also very cool. And your lot there in hand. Iron hands, yeah, that I've got interested in. <laughs> and then White Scars, Raven Guard successors. Imperial Fist successes and Iron Hand successes. So obviously you've got the uh, Black Templars there. Mm -hmm. and the Crimson Fists, obviously. Yeah, okay. yeah. You, should, you could have just said. No, no, no. So some picks. All with more picks. And more, more picks. Picks. <laughs> picks. Mm. We'll change some picks. Well, at least it's a change of colour. Yeah. It's cool on me. It's like having a white dwarf into this. This, this bit is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's some uh, Raven Guard. Raven Guard, yeah. Very cool. Stop long run the ones I like most. There's Vulcan. Mm. Yay! Not the Vulcan, but it's Vulcan. Vulcan Houston. It's the new uh, librarian that's out next week. Very nice. He does look cool. He does look cool. Mm. Then we have um, some heavy metal pictures. Necrons. Necrons and Salamanders. Yeah. I've been at it. That's a very cool banner. That is a cool banner. It's a cool scene, that, actually. Yeah. I like that. And then we're on to the meat of this, to the codex. That was a fluff from the old <laughs> This is the, the main, stuff. main courses, really. Um, so, the Gladius Strike Force. Let me... Take you through this page at a time. So if you haven't read any of the internet leaks and stuff like that, this is the new way to field Space Marines basically. Uh, much like the Necrons that we started this trend, we have a, a company. In fact we have a demi company. So to use the Gladius Strike Force and the command benefits are um, if your army contains one or more Gladius Strike Forces you can Enact each of the combat doctrines, which I showed you at the beginning in the cards, um, once per game. When each combat doctrine is enacted, all models in your army with the chapter tactics rule that are part of the Gladius Strike Force are affected, so it affects everyone as part of this formation. And uh, the company support, if the Gladius Strike Force includes two battle demi companies, one including the captain and the other including the chaplain, then they form a battle company. And any unit from the battle company that has the option to take a Rhino or Razorback drop pod um, as dedicated transports may take one at no additional cost. The only thing you have to pay for it is the upgrade. So if you want to upgrade the Razorback's uh, guns to last cannons, you've got to pay for the last cannons, but you don't pay for the actual Razorback. So cheap Rhinos and drop pods all round, or the expensive ones, they don't cost anything. The restrictions to this are, you must include at least one core choice and one auxiliary choice, and you may include up to one more core choice, up to three command choices, and any number of auxiliary choices in any combination. Okay, but if you want to have this second rule with the company support, you've got to have two of these battle companies, demi companies. And we'll show, I'll, go, I'll get a bit more into them in a, in a bit, but um, basically, if you can see there, you need one captain or chaplain, you can have a command squad, you need three tactical squads. You, can, you need to take an assault squad, bike squad, attack, bike squad unit, or a unit of land speeders, or Centurion assault squad. You have to take one Devastator squad, or Centurion Devastator squad, and you can have Dreadnoughts. Okay, so that's, that's your first option there. And then you have the other command options, which are here, which is a Strike Force command. And we have the command squad, which is basically the chaplain and the command squad, which is that box set that came out with the Razorback ages ago. You can have up to three command options, the librarians being another one. And then you can take auxiliary options, which are armoured task forces. This way. Uh, the first company task force. 10th Company Task Force, Anti-Air Defence Force, Storm Wing, Suppression Force, Centurion's Siegebreaker Cohort, 
a long way to spearhead, but we'll get into all those formations in a minute. Okay. So, uh, the usual thing, data sheets and how to build an army, and then on this page we have the actual war gear list. So, there's the points costs. I don't think there's anything dramatically different. Again, I'm just going to quick look through it as I'm reading out as well. I think most things there are costed similar to what they were at least, if not the same. And there's the chapter relics. Again, we'll get to later on. Space Marine Standards, Vehicle, Space Marine Equipment, and all the MacGuffin at the end. So, yeah, I love it. Ooh, yep. Okay, so Captain Sicarius. He has his rules. He is uh, 10 points cheaper than he was. And uh, there's the proof. I think it was 185 points before. We have Chief Librarian Tigarius. 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 Oh, some Roman name. Claire will be able to pronounce it better than me. <laughs> Tigarius. Okay. If you say so, don't swear. <laughs> and uh, there's his rules. I think he's the same price as he was. Uh, we have the chaplain Cassius. You were taking the rip out of before, was it? Was it that one or was it the other one? No, it was the other one I was taking the rip out. Um, there's his chapter relic. He's the same price. Then we have Sergeant Talion, who is now a HQ choice. So he's been upgraded just from a squad sergeant upgrade to a proper HQ choice, 50 points. That's pretty good actually. I do like him as a HQ choice, that's better. It makes mm. it easier to take special means as allies really, because if you take a HQ choice he's only 50 points. He's not a bad choice, to be fair. So there he is. Then we have Sergeant Cross again, he's another HQ choice. And Casorio Khan. I don't think there's any changes in his cost. Chapter Relic. There he is. I can read that. We have Vulcan. There he is. Sounds cool. And we have the Shadow Captain Shrike. Is the I don't often use special cards, but I do use Vulcan. Mm. I do like him. <laughs> we have Lysander. Two hundred thirty points. And we have Pedro Cantor. Yay! And he has one hundred eighty-five points. Who Claire loves. <laughs> I've got the model. I still haven't painted it. I got it at Games Day. Yeah, like years and years ago. 2012 or something, wasn't it? Or 2010. 2010, I think. I think it was released, I can't remember. <laughs> um, High Marshal Helbricht, 180 points. There he is. And we have the Empress Champion. I think he's pretty much the same. And then we have uh, Chaplain Grimaldus. 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 He's a wee bit cheaper than he was. He's actually 185 points previously. He's 150 now. But his uh, serfs are a bit more expensive. They came in at 10 points each. Mm. And I think he had three, and he could uh, equip up to five. But now he just has. He can have up to five and the 15 points each. 
So, on to the uh, non-named characters. We have the captain, who's 90 points. And you'll notice there's no chapter master, that's because the chapter master is now an upgrade for 40 points. So, chapter master was 130 points and still is. Captain and chapter master are also able to take all the same options from here. Next we have a librarian weighing 65 points and psych uh, usual, that's pretty much the same as it was I think mm -hmm. Biomancy, Demonology, Divination, Paramancy, Telekinesis and Telepathy so yeah they can summon demons <laughs> cool. and we have the Tech Marine who's made it into the HQ slots officially so you can have a Tech Marine as a HQ choice and this guy is basically, the old Tech Marine was, was it 50 points? Yeah. But the Master of the Forge was 90 points. However this guy is actually somewhere in the middle because there's only one Tech Marine now. And his stats are pretty much more like the uh, Master of the Forge. Apart from his leadership is a bit less. So there's his rules. So, and there's his upgrades. He's a two-pager. Yeah. So oh, this was on This the was list. the guy I was taking off of. Yeah. This is the the guy you get in the box set, I think. It just reminds me of you know, He Man. He Man. His pose. <laughs> By the power of Grey's skull or somebody else's skull, whoever that is. <laughs> 90 points. No changes there. And he's pretty much the same as he was. Then we move on to the troops. Starting with the tactical squad, 70 points. Everything I think is exactly the same as it was before. And then we have the scout squad coming at 55 points. And again, I think everything is the same as it was before. Crusader squad, 70 points. And again, I don't think there's any changes there for the Black Templars. Then we have the command squad, which was absent from earlier in this. It's now an elite's choice. It's 10 points less than it was. I think that's the only change to the command squad. Um, there you go. And then we have the honor guard, which are 85 points. And there's the rules for them. I don't think there's any differences. And um, we have the Centurion Assault Squad, who are cheaper than they were before. Were they 190 or 185? I think they were, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think they're 190 points. So they're actually cheaper, but what's actually happening down here, I think from memory, um, you can have a Centurion Sergeant, because basically the, the Sergeant that you used to get was basically a veteran, if you look at your stats, but he isn't anymore, so the standard one you get for 165 points isn't a veteran. But you can't upgrade him for uh, for a poultry. Where is it there? 10 points, is it? Yep. Yep. And the 55 points model for the Centurions, which still makes them cheaper than they actually were overall. So maybe a bit more worth taking than they were. Okay, so we have the Vanguard Veteran Squad, which I think are pretty much the same as they were. Yeah, I don't think there's any changes to that. The Stern Guard Veteran Squad, I think, are 10 points cheaper than they actually were before, but the actual model count cost is the same. And here's one of the bigger changes to the Codex. 100 point dreadnought, which isn't a change, but if you look at those stats, we've doubled our attacks. So the dreadnoughts are actually pretty cool again. So, yes, my dreadnoughts have been sat waiting to be fielded and make it out again. And there's our upgrades. And oh look, they can be fielded as a squad of three now. Yay! Excellent. So that's pretty cool. So that'll save on H, uh, elite choices being used up. And then we have the Venerable Dreadnoughts, same deal, same price, but 
the attacks upgrade. I mean, Blood Angels are crying a bit about this because their attacks haven't been upgraded and they're just the same. <laughs> Furiosa Dreadnought's a bit furious about it, but there we go. Salamander's like, hey, whatever. Should I do? And then finally, the Ironclad Dreadnought with the same deal. There's the stats and the gear. And then we have the Legion of the Damned on the next page for 125 points. And no changes that I can see there. Next, Terminators. Both squads, both Assault and Normal, there they are, have been dropped in points cost from 200 to 175. Individual Terminators are 35 points as opposed to 40. There is the options for them, but if you come over here, you will notice that the Lightning Claws Terminators are 35 points, but if you want a Thunder Armour and Shield, you're going to have to pay 10 points. I believe that was just 5 points before, so you're still paying more for your uh, hammers. Which is a shame, because I like my hammers. But that's still cool, it's still a points cost drop. Then we have the Assault Squad, which at first looks like a points cost drop, because it's 70 points. But it isn't. Because these are Assault Squads with their jump packs, you have to add the jump packs on later for 3 points each. Which makes them the same price. And you'll also notice down here, no more free transports. You can only select one, you can't select it for free. So they've done away with that. But, if you're taking a Demi Company times two, obviously like I showed you before, you can still get your free transports that way. Next we have uh, the Scout Biker Squad, coming in at 54 points. So 54 points, there is the MacGuffin that goes with them. We have bike squads, 63 points, all the same gear. We have tap bike squads, I believe they're, they're cheaper than they were. I think they were 45 I, I points. I think they were 45 points, yeah. Yeah, they can given multi multi for 10, so... Yeah, I think they were. Mm. They're 45 or 50 points. I think they're 45. Um, one speed of storms, so there we go. So, the storm, 40 points. And that didn't used to actually be a fast stat choice, that was just a troops choice, but now you can have it on its own. There's its options. And then all on speeders. Which were 50 points, now they're 45, so they've knocked 5 points off. I think they've changed the points cost of the gear that goes with them. I'm pretty sure the assault cannon was 25 points. Was it? It does look like they've been changed, to be fair. Everyone, everyone watching this can check that with their old codexes, mm -hmm. but I think they've gone down in price. If so, land speeders again will be a bit more useful. And then we have our Rhinos and Razorbacks, both fast attack options. Uh, 35 and 55 points, no changes there. We have Drop Pods coming in as fast attack choice as well. 35 points, again no change. Same options I think. Storm Talon Gunship, 110 points. And points cost of their uh, gears changed though. Huh? You can see that though. I think that's changed. I'm sure that's come down in price. We have Devastator Squad for 70 points. There we go. And the Centurion Devastator Squad, which has also come down in price, that's 165 points. And those are their options. So 55 points for Centurion. 10 points for change, I think that's the same. Turn at last cannon, that's cheaper. I think the grab amp's more expensive. If that's right, I think. Citation needed on that. 
then we have Thunderfire Cannons. The codex goes on and on forever. <laughs> That's why it's a big 100 points each, but you can have three in a group. There we go. Just to prove it. Predators, 75 points each, but you can have three in a group. <laughs> this is the theme with the Space Marine tanks. You've made the tanks oh, yeah. a lot more useful, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. And there's the kill shot ability for the Predator. If you've got three of them, they get Monster Hunter and Tank Hunter. For fun. Okay, we have Whirlwinds next. 65 points, I think it's the same price, but they get the Suppressive Bombardment if you take three of them. If that'll ever focus. There you go. So it's basically pinning and shred. Vindicators. They get the Line Breaker Bombardment for three of them. Which is awesome. <laughs> I can't wait to use my Vindicators now, I do have three of them. You do actually, yeah. I like Vindicators. <laughs> I never get to use them. Oh. Now I will. Yay! Hunters and Stalkers. No other differences other than the three in a squad. And the new special rule. The Storm Raven gunship. There it is. I don't think there's any changes to the points cost of things. I don't think so anyway. Land Raiders. Go on forever. <laughs> <laughs> the standard Land Raider, 250 points. All the same stuff as last time, 10 points from Multi Melter. The Land Raider Crusader, 150 points. Again, 16 models, as opposed to 10. 10 points for a multi-melter. And uh, one red of Redeemer. 10 points for a multi-melter, no difference there. And you probably noticed by now, Marius Calgar is a Lord of War choice. 275 points. With the option of being taken in power armor or in, as we see, Terminator armor for another 10 points. I don't think any of these rules are much different. Eternal Warrior, did he have that last time? He did, yeah. He did? Yeah. I forget who has it and who doesn't. Mm. So there you go, that's the Lord of War choice. So the Demi Company. The first of the formations, and the one we covered briefly before. Let's just move the camera a little bit. Hang on. With a bit of shadow on there, that'll probably be a better angle. So there's no restrictions, and it's one captain or chaplain, an optional command squad, three tactical squads, one assault squad, bike squad, attack squad, sorry, attack bike squad, unit of land speeders, or a centurion assault squad. So only one of any of those, basically. And uh, one devastator squad, or one centurion devastator squad and possibly dreadnoughts if you want to. So this is going to be the main force you're going to want to use if you want to follow the Gladius rule. You're going to have to have, to have one of these. Two if you want to use the free transports rule. And uh, we did work it out, didn't we? We did. The cheapest battle company you can buy is 410 points, which consists of five-man squads of everything minimum. No upgrades whatsoever. A captain or a chaplain with no upgrades, just as they come, mm -hmm. completely vanilla. And uh, you take a attack bike for forty points, and a devastator squad with no upgrades again. So pretty useless as four hundred and ten points. It's just just basically space marines with guns, yeah, and uh, not much else. Um, you take two of them. That's obviously eight hundred and twenty points. Yeah, and then you've got to take the additional uh, uh, detachment. As well, we at least one of them. The tenth. And we took the tenth company one, which you've not seen yet, but we'll get to that. But that's basically three scout squads, Scouts. fifty-five points yeah. each with no upgrades. So it comes to does it nine hundred and eighty-five points? Yes, it was. It was just shy of a thousand. And that's with no upgrades, so it's less than a thousand points with no upgrades. So you can use your other thousand points to upgrade to your heart's content, basically. So in a two thousand point army, you can easily 
field a full company of Space Marines with an additional attachment, mm-hmm. if you wish. Um, but I'll go through the additional attachments as well. So we have the Anti-Air Defence Force. Which is one unit of hunters, two units of stalkers. One unit of stalkers, sorry. But you've got to have at least two stalkers in that unit. So it's at least one, two, at least three tanks. So mm. One of them being a hunter, two of them being a stalker. A minimum. At maximum, you can have three of each. So you have six tanks. And that gives you the Sky Spear, Avenging, the Auto Targeting. I can't read that through the camera. <laughs> like Avenging. <laughs> that's cool, like. Right? You're just making up new English words, aren't you? That's really weird. <laughs> I looked at the book, oh, auto-targeting. Yeah. Your, auto f- your auto-targeting was failing there. Yeah. Dramatically. <laughs> okay. So that's the first option. Uh, the next one is a first company task force, which consists of three to five units chosen in any combination from the following list, Terminators, Terminator Assault Squads, Vanguards or Stern Guard Squads. There's no restrictions. They get fear and fearless. So they're terrifying and not bothered about fear themselves. And the extremist threat level, that means at the start of the game, before deployment, nominate one unit in the enemy army. Units in this formation have the preferred enemy special rule when making attacks against the nominated unit. And terrifying proficiency. Enemy units subtract, subtract two from their leadership if they're within 12 inches of at least three units from this formation. Mm. So you're dropping that into the heart of the enemy, then mm. they're going to run like hell, <laughs> basically. And we have Strike Force Ultra next. There we go. So we have one Captain, two Terminator Squads, two Terminator Assault Squads, one Venerable Dreadnought, one Storm Raven, and one Land Raider Crusader, Crusader. The restrictions are the Captain must be equipped with Terminator armour. During deployment, all units from this formation other than transport vehicles must either be embarked or a transport vehicle from this formation are placed into deep strike reserve. That's just reminded me of something as well before I read the next bit. Um, the bikes, I forgot to mention this, have the mounted, res- is it mounted something or other rule? So if you take a, a Captain Chaplin HQ choice on a bike, you can take bikes as troop choices. Oh. Sorry, just forgot about that for all the white scars yes. players out there. I remember you yes. saying it, yes. I remember that. That just reminded me for some reason. Um, but anyway, the rules for this formation are uh, Ultra Strike. All units in this formation must be placed in reserve. Make reserve rules for all the units in this formation at the start of your first turn. Make reserve rules as normal for any units in this formation that do not arrive. Okay. And um, Fury of the Storm, when a Terminator squad from this formation arrives via Deep Strike, reserve or disembarks from a transport vehicle in this formation, the first time all ranged weapons carried by the models in this unit add one to the number of shots they can take until the end of the turn. So blasting away and then Force of a Thunderbolt is the assault version of that, where they can add plus one to their attacks. Nice. So you basically striking, alpha striking. Um, there is the command squad, which was on the back, which is the box set with the chaplain and the Razorback, the chaplain doing the He-Man impression. Uh, with one chaplain and one command squad, and they must be taken in a Razorback. And they can't leave the, the command squad, it gets Crusader. Stirring rhetoric, all friendly units within Space Marines, faction within six inches. Of the chaplain of this formation may re-roll failed to hit rolls during the first round of each close combat. So there you go. Nice. Cool. We have zoom out a little bit. The tenth company strike force, which I was talking about, which is mm-hmm. the scouts. Now this can consist of three to five units chosen from any combination from the following list. So we chose three normal scout squads. But you can also choose bike scout squads, and you can have Sergeant Talion as well. But the bike squads have to take cluster mines. So it makes them a bit more expensive for what we were saying. But um, not a problem really if you want to just take this as a full company yourself. It's a pretty cool option taking a 10th company. Um, concealed positions. That's the rules for that. Should I just let you read that? See what you think of it yourselves. Mm-hmm. 
Next we have the Stormwind. Stormwind. And that is a Storm Raven and two Storm Talons. They gain, there's no restrictions. They gain Data Lattice or Data Lattice. Mm -hmm. Whichever one you want to use, Data or Data. <laughs> As long as at least one Storm Talon from this formation has not been completely destroyed, formation Storm Raven Gunship has a strafing run special rule. And we also have Escort Craft. When making reserve rolls, make a single roll for the entire formation. On a successful reserves roll, all of the units from this formation arrive from reserve. So there you go, if you want to use them. And then we have the Centurion Siege Breaker Cohort. Which is two to four units of Centurion Assault Squads and one Ironclad Dreadnought. They get Demolition Specialists, which hopefully you can read that. And Seismic Devastation. Okay. We then have the Land Raider Spearhead, which is three units. Uh, chosen from any of the three Land Raider variants, no restrictions. Armoured Behemoths rule, model some information ignore, crease shake and crease stun, weapon destroyed, and immobilise results on the vehicle damage table as long as they're in six inches of at least one of the model from this formation. Even the mightiest shall fall. Models in this formation can re roll fail to wound rolls or armour rolls, penetration rolls when shooting against gargantuan creatures or super heavy vehicles. Goodbye, knights. Um, <laughs> Or buildings or the mighty bulk walk special rule. There you go. And then we have the Librarius Conclave, which is from the command choices, which is three to five librarians with no restrictions. And they get empiric channeling. Mm. Which also zoom in on. It'd probably be annoying as well, because they'd all be like, shh. Kind of thing. So a lot of people going shh. Yeah. So a lot of people going shh. <laughs> we have the Armoured Task Force, which is many, many tanks. There it is. I think what we could say from this is tanks are in. And tanks are in. <laughs> so you get a Tenry, you get up to three units of Thunderfire Cannons. So if that's units, that's between one and nine. Um, actual Thunderfire Cannons. That would be pretty bad. Mm -hmm. um, three to five units chosen in any combination from the following list of indicators, predators, or whirlwinds, and the optional of having Sergeant Kronos. Um, they gain the Paragoric Chant. That's a good word. <laughs> Vehicles from misformation ignore the effects of crew stunned and crew shaken. While they're within six inches of the Tech Marine or a Tech Marine from Gunner from this formation. Mm. And the will of the Omnissiah, the Tech Marine and the Tech Marine Gunners from this formation have plus one bonus for making blessings of the Omnissiah rolls to repair vehicles from this formation. There you go. Mm -hmm. And last, I think. Might be the last one. I'll find out in a second. The Suppression Force. This was an old Apocalypse formation, this. And I do have two whirlwinds and a I bought them for you. Yeah, I remember ones. buying them for so this you. This is cool. Yeah. This is actually a formation in this. It's a whirlwind, two whirlwinds, sorry, one unit of at least two, and one unit of one speeders, which is at least one. We have the data, data, link, telemetry. One land speeder from this formation can nominate an enemy unit within 18 inches and in line of sight in its shooting phase. Cannot do this in the same turn it moves flat out until the end of that phase all shooting attacks maybe the world and multiple missile multiple launchers by models in this formation against the nominated can re-roll to hit and are treated as having a infinite range. So shoot anywhere you like, basically. <laughs> yeah. As long yes. as the land speeder can see it. So that is the end of the formations. We have the warlord traits. is Angels of Death for one, which gives you the fear special rule. Furthermore, I mean it's locked in combat with the world must take fear tests on a 3d6. I'll 
hoping you can see that, and that's not too much glare on there. Got the Imperium Sword for two, your Warlord and his unit have the Furious Charge special rule. Iron Resolve for three, your Warlord and has Feel No Pain special rule. Storm of Fire, at the start of each of your shooting phases, normally at one friendly unit within 12 inches of your Warlord. That is drawn from the same chapter. That unit's ranged weapons have the Rending special rule to the end of the phase. Rights of War on five, all models in your Warlord's attachments can use his leadership in place of their own. And Champion of Humanity. Your Warlord, no friendly use in 12 inches of your Warlord, with a faction that is part of the armies of the Imperium, may must re-roll failed morale checks, pinning tests and fear tests. That's pretty good, because you can use that on his allies as well. Mm -hmm. The chapter tactics we covered at the beginning, so I'm not going to them again. Then we have the Armouries, which I think, I don't think there's anything new. I don't think there's any new weapons, is there? I don't recall seeing any new weapons to acquire on this. So without an in-depth look into this, I can't really tell you if anything's different or not. Um, so, feel free to pause as I rush this in front of you. different though. Yeah. And the other thing different here is this armoured cherubim. Chibum, bum, 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 bum. Yeah I was going to mention that because he was in the little picture wasn't he? I can't remember which one he was in. He's in the Devastator box. Though. That's it. And there he is. One use only. That's your re-roll to hits in the shooting phase. And then he's gone. Gone Aww. forever. Gone to help someone else that needs him. Yeah, it's like the little hobo. I call Mary Poppins. Alright. <laughs> Fair enough. And. Yeah. Same stuff. I don't think there's anything new there. Tactical objectives and the chapter relics. Chapter relics. We have. The armor indomitinus. Indomitinus. Yeah. Um. The the armor, whatever that says. Big armor. <laughs> Two plus armor save, and then six plus invulnerable save. Once per game, at the beginning of any phase, the wearer can choose temporarily push the armor's force field to the limit. Push it to the limit. And because a two plus invulnerable save for that phase. It's not bad. Burning blade. That's basically plus three strength, two AP, melee, blind, and incandescent. There's the rule for incandescent, I hope that's coming up on the screen. There it is. Me? Mm -hmm. The Primax Wrath. Okay, so that's 24 inch strength four, AP four, salvo three, five, mastercrafted shred. A hell of a ball gun. <laughs> well, I thought it was just a Primark that came on the field and went, I'm angry! One just nukes everything. Yeah, feel my wrath! Like a finishing move. Yeah. We have the Shield Eternal, which is a Storm Shield. In addition, the bearer of the shield gains the Admantium Will and Eternal Warrior Ooh, special rules. Nice. Oh. <laughs> standard of the Emperor Ascendant. Well, we'll equip with this standard of the Emperor Ascendant as the Fear Special Rule in addition, friendly models drawn from the same chapter. Uh, half plus one attack and feel a special rule within 12 inches. Want some salts? Mm. The Teeth of Tara. Okay, that's plus two strength, three AP, melee, concussive, rampage, specialist weapon. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then we have the objectives at the end, which I'll not really go into. Not usually. And well, that's the end of the codex. So, overall, I like it. You know, there's a lot of points reductions to things that I've stopped using, which is, I suppose, is to try and make me use them again. 
will make people buy them. Mm. Yeah, what's the point for you? I already own them, so there's not going to get any sales from me. I'm not sure. <laughs> I've already, they've already had the sales of Space Marines from me. Yeah, I've got enough to sink a battleship. I have many Space Marines. Yeah. And um, but there's a lot I never use now, like Terminators, Dreadnoughts. Yeah. Which I like, I like the models, but I just never get a chance to use them. Never make it into the armies, so I think they will. Mm-hmm. I like the fact we've got uh, vehicle squadrons. Yeah, I like the way they're bringing the tanks back, to be quite honest, I think. Yeah. You know, but yeah. they were a bit... You didn't use them as much. Yeah, because they take up too many slots. Yeah. So you're like, oh, I've got these three Predators, but that's three slots. But I want a Land Raider, but no. Yeah, but from what you've said from that, it seems like you can take what you want now. And yeah, and you've got the formations to choose from. I said yeah. 410 points for the minimum... Just a bunch of space marines, yeah. and then the rest you can do what you want with. Mm-hmm. Um, we even use them as allies or anything like that. Yeah. 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 Cool. I can see, I can see allied options coming in there, especially with the cheap uh, sergeant as a HQ choice. Yeah. Um, a few scouts, and then off you go with whatever you want as allies. Yeah, I, I like it, it's good. Uh, what I don't like is the fact the Blood Angels are now lagging behind because their codex oh. came out before this. So um, the Dreadnoughts are rubbish compared to the vanilla Dreadnoughts, which is weird. I like mm. the fact the Dreadnoughts have got two more attacks. They needed it. They needed something because they're meant to be fierce, destructive machines and two attacks just doesn't cut it. Not really. No. You get them into combat like a hard and someone just kicks them in the nads and it's Down all over. <laughs> I mean, Chaos Dreadnoughts, Hellbrutes, they all need to be upgraded. Yeah. I'm sure, I think the Dark Angel, that's the rumour anyway, the Dark Angel Codex is out next. It may not be, that's the rumour. Uh, I've seen a multiple picture of a uh, chaplain, what they called, the Dark Angel ones. Uh, uh, Quizzes, what, not Inquisitor? You know, uh, you know what I mean, I don't mean. Inquisition? No, that's not. What are you on the way? Inquisition. So they just, I already said they, that. Yeah, they just wandered past. No one suspects the Inquisition. <laughs> It'll come back to me. Yeah. But I've just been blitzed by Villain Space Marines, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a cool model anyway. It's got Power Fist. He looks awesome. But um, I'm sure there's a codex coming out for them, and because it's coming out after this, I imagine their dreadnoughts and everything will be upgraded mm. because it'd be daft not to. It's just a shame that the Blood Angels have missed out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At least until the next book comes out, which probably won't be long. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Oh, they might just FAQ it. Very lot. Um, so, yeah. Put an addendum in. It's a good book. It's it's worth getting. Um, obviously, if you're a Space Marine player, you're going to get it. End of. If you're not a Space Marine player, you want to know your enemy, so you're mm. probably going to get it. I think for the money, with it being quite a big, thick book, and there's like, it packs a lot in there, it's well worth it for the money. It's, for me, well, I, I think, think it's thicker than the two Mechanicum books put yeah. together, and that they cost more because they were 20 quid each, weren't they? Yeah. They're 20 or 25? Something like that. I can't, yeah. remember, I can't now. remember how much they were, but, but um, f- from my point of view, thinking about it, it, it is well worth the money. Yeah. It's one of the biggest codexes there. You know that you can get, and yeah. it does pack a lot in. There's a lot of fluff in there, and a lot of. It's definitely a big codex. I've held it for this long. It's uh, yeah. It's, it's got really heavy, really fast. Mm. But um, yeah, there's a lot of improvements in there. I think there's more improvements than anything. Mm. I didn't notice anything that was a negative. To be fair, for the Space Marines. They missed out. Nothing they didn't. Nothing they didn't have before anyway. Um, I'm sure someone else might notice that and put it in the comments. If you do, feel free. Um, I don't mind. I mean, this is the first time I've looked at it, so you guys will get a chance to look at it yourselves when you get trying to. Please feel free to re- leave comments. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Mm-hmm. It helps out loads. Yeah. And I hope you'll join us again. Uh, what videos are we doing? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've just finished my night. My, um, night. That video's not up yet though. That's so not up yet, but I have That done. should be up soon. And uh, I'm, I put a first Dark Mechanic on, up. up yeah. and the Onager and the Dragoon will be coming up soon because I'm currently painting them. You've been playing Lego World. Yep, that's up already. So if, if you want to see what Lego World's like <laughs> in an unrelated topic, please uh, check that out. And um, that's it for now, I think. Yeah. So uh, thanks for watching. 
and I hope you join us again soon. Mm -hmm. Bye for now. Bye.